going on, folks? Grandison Shines here with Saduri International, and we have a big welcome for you. Welcome to the Silvertone Podcast. I am here with one of my favorite folks, and her name is... Oh, you're talking about me. I'm talking about you. Hi, this is Yasmin Murray from Phoenix, Arizona. How is everyone? It's Super Bowl week for us today. I mean today. Super Bowl week. Oh my gosh. This, there's a lot of stuff going on here right now. We have so many items or I should say events that we have to attend. I'm attending one tonight, which I'm part of. We have, if you're in town, come out to Founding Fathers and Channel. I'm going to go ahead and plug this event. We have some NFL players and, and some ex-NFL players who are going to be playing dominoes, the Super Bowls tournament super bowl tournament meaning that people who are avid domino players we're gonna go out we're gonna come out we're gonna show them the, the ball players how the game is really played how about that we're gonna tell them how the game really played so they may have a little bit of a height advantage they may have a little bit of a speed advantage over us but guess what when it comes down to slapping the bones on the tables it's all about the mindset there so if you know how to play bones enter the tournament in fact go to our site, our website. In fact, let me plug the website here a little bit. Oh, actually, I'll do that later on. But make sure, make sure, make sure that you go right to Founding Fathers in Chandler. So type that in. It's 100 bucks to enter the domino tournament. You can come and spectate and all that good stuff. And then after that, whoever's the champion, we got a, a heavyweight champion, like wrestling type belt for the, the one who's going to be winning the actual title the title the title the title it's all about that title there right so come on out yasmin how about you what, what do you got you're muted you're muted you keep, you keep muting yourself <laughs> no i was um uh, anyway never mind i had some jazz going i don't know if you can hear yeah. it see can you hear it uh, no i cannot hear the jazz okay then don't worry about it it sets my mood <laughs> Anyway, so what I was talking about, is there a cash prize also or just uh, bragging rights and a belt? Um, but definitely bragging rights. Go to smokeandbonesaz.com. Smokeandbonesaz.com. Again, that's one more time. Smokeandbonesaz.com. Spelled all out. So bragging rights, of course. The belt, of course. No cash prize. And winner takes all kind of opportunity. So go. Is there, is there food, food and drinks? They're gonna have food trucks there. The 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 place, the Founding Fathers place, has libations, has all the, and they'll be having some food as well. But there'll be three food trucks. There's a lady there that has a hot tea setup, really nice, gorgeous um, setup. There's also the youth football sports. They're gonna be supporting youth football there. So they have a. A, a team there. I forgot the name of the team, but they're also going to be there. And there's going to be a cigar lounge outside. Folks will be selling cigars, that kind of opportunity. So this is going to be a blast. It's going to be a lot of fun. But as we were talking about, we have a lot of events going on this week that we're going to have to be participant in. So I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. It's all about having a bunch of fun as the Super Bowl's here. So that being said, we have, actually, before we get into part two of the Leadership Path, the essence of success and leadership, self-awareness is our conversation today. But before we get down into the meat of the conversation, wherever you're watching us, make sure that you like, share, subscribe. Go ahead, hit the like button. If you're on YouTube, actually subscribe. If you're on Facebook, hit the like button, but also follow us there. Become one of our associates there to our page and then if you're on linkedin also make sure you follow us on the saduri page on linkedin so make sure you make, get all the notifications on youtube.com forward slash saduri international if we're at linkedin if you're at linkedin if you're wanted to to portray information on via linkedin or see the information linkedin.com forward slash company forward slash saduri international and then facebook facebook.com forward slash saduri international spelled all out saduri international we are a coaching mindset training facility. We work with leaders and emerging leaders, in fact, and everything else in between. In fact, the conversation today, talking about self-awareness, is a bit more of an advanced topic or for advanced leaders. But, but, but if you are an emerging leader 
this is something you're going to have to tune into as you are growing in your career. So make sure, tune in, share this. You can watch it afterwards as well. A lot of information that we can talk about. But we're going to keep it down to in the area of self-confidence. And we'll be talking about others' confidence. We'll also be talking about situational confidence. Situa excuse me, others' awareness, not confidence. So self-awareness, others' awareness, and situational awareness are the three types of awareness that leaders should be paying attention to. Before we get into that, we're going to make sure that we explain everything, what self-awareness is, why you need it, and all that other good stuff. You yes. ready? Yes, indeed. And I want to thank Joyce Hackettscale for joining us this morning. And my dear friend, happy birthday to you as well. Belated, I know we almost share a birthday so thank you for being here yes i am ready all right so no you were talking about confidence but it does include confidence self-awareness comes also from confidence knowing yourself absolutely 100 percent correctly said there very well articulated as we say so this is in, this is our continuance of our 11 part series we have 11 parts that we're going to be talking about this is part do part dos part two meaning that we are going to facilitate a conversation every single week, every single week, a live broadcast every single week until we get to all 11 of them. And then we're going to tie everything else together. If you want to send us a message, make sure you go to send us an email message at info at sedurientl.com, info at S-E-D-U-I-R-E-I-N-T-L.com. And we'll be more than happy to talk to you about our program, answer any questions, answer any questions that you have after the facts. We'll be looking out for that. If you want to participate in some live conversation, do that and we'll make sure we get to it afterwards. Still learn how to work this system here. So we'll be joining you in conversation after the fact. All right. Perfectly set. All right. So let's get down to brass tacks. We have some information that we're going to be talking about regarding self-awareness. Now, let me just read self read a little bit about self-awareness so we can all be on the same page. And then we're going to get down to some questions, get down into to a little bit of a nitty-gritty talking about how this pertains to you and leadership, how this pertains to you as an entrepreneur, how this pertains to you as a person that is growing in your profession. So self-awareness is important for leadership because it enables leaders to understand their strengths, understand their weaknesses, values, the beliefs, and the emotions, especially the emotions. That's very, very key there. We'll talk about that a little bit more. And how these factors influence their or your thoughts and your actions. This understanding allows leaders to be more mindful and intentional. I love that word there. We do everything in terms of in intent as a leader. It comes from the heart, the heart's intent, but everything is very much strategically done and implement it. The intention of the leadership style, your leadership style to build more effective relationships, which is extremely important in leadership. One of the big differences between an influencer and a leader, it can be summed up in one word and that is relationship. As a leader, we have the relationship, a personal relationship, or maybe more so a professional relationship. Sometimes it's personal, it can get down into it, should be a little bit there. But we're also making sure that we have those solid relationships. Once we are accepted as leader, we continue to blossom and explore the boundaries or even within the boundaries of the relationship. So making sure it's an effective relationship with others to communicate more effectively and to make better decisions. We have found that people who are more self-aware make better decisions. You'll find that the more self-aware you are, the more better decisions you will make also. It also helps leaders to recognize and manage their biases. That's a word that sometimes we don't want to talk about, but we are biased and we go through certain types of training, DEI training, to make sure those biases are not communicated and or nuance in conversation and actions toward people. But we do have biases. It is just human nature to have biases. And to think that we don't is very not so much the capacity of the mindset that we are looking at. But do know do know you have biases. So to manage the bias, to be more open to feedback and to continuously grow and develop as a leader. 
By being more self-aware, leaders are able to create a positive impact and lead with authenticity, which is crucial for earning the trust and respect of their followers. Anything you want to add on that, Yasmin? Yeah, I mean, like you said, everything included, but also the self-awareness is the ability to recognize and understand one's own thoughts, emotions, and actions. So once you know who you are, and I know from our program is, we created that program to understand our, our eight modalities, to understand you first. How can you lead people when you don't know who you are? You have to understand and be able to know who you are, self-awareness, before you can lead others. So, you know, your thoughts, your emotions, your actions, understanding that. So you're already answering the question of what self-awareness is. Yeah, I mean, you were going through, were going through self-awareness. I thought I might as well just add that to it. Yeah, that cool. it, um, involves being aware of one's own mental state. And that's important. And the processes, as well as the ability to reflect on them. Now, how do you reflect on self-awareness? Gremson? Oh, you're asking me, how do I reflect on self-awareness? Well, we'll get into that. Let me add my two cents about what on that. Meditation. I would, I will, I'm going to go ahead and answer that. Meditation. Um, you know, introspection. Self-awareness is considered <coughs> a key aspect of human consciousness and is thought to be a prerequisite for many cognitive and emotional processes. So there you have it, Granison. Anything else? Well, you well, yeah, meditation, self-awareness, introspection. Let me hone in on that word for a little bit. So introspection, understanding how to, and I see it like this, and I teach our leaders this. Find time to isolate from all the things you're doing, isolate from people, and get into the state where you can just be by yourself. Leaders should learn how to be by themselves, understand how to be by themselves effectively in order to accomplish certain mindsets, thought processes, and even to hone in on those thought processes to make them become even more better in, in terms of usability when we are leading others. So find time to isolate. Now, introspection, there are served for several different ways in, in, in which introspect. I'm going to give you a few different ways right now, a few different topics. Introspect on yourself and from a social perspective. How am I interacting with people from a social opportunity? So when I am present in a group of people, what are some of the observations that I make about myself? So that's one opportunity. Do you understand how to, to introspect about yourself personally? What is it about me that makes me me? What is it that I like about myself? What is it that I don't like about myself? What is it that I want to change? that I can utilize or change to become better for other people. As leaders, we're always outside of ourselves. We shouldn't be 100% altruistic. We do have to have that selfish-centered mindset, and that's what the self, the right appropriate use of self-centered mindset is for improvement, improving oneself. So understanding that the social aspect, the personal aspect, how and what are my pet peeves? What are the things that trigger me? We'll talk about that later on. Do understand and be able to communicate effectively your pet peeves, things that trigger you, yeah, things that make you have this swell of emotions on the frustrated anger side because people will touch on those buttons. They'll be poking the bear at times, and there are times when we have to be conflict confronting versus conflict avoided so we don't blow up. But if we communicate people to people our pet peeves, for instance, I don't like when people are consistently chronically late. So I tell my coaches, that's why I have a very, very, very low rate of <laughs> coaches being not on time because when we start talking, we first implement our program, one of the conversations we talk about are the pet peeves. And I named three, I just gave you one. So when someone, I'm dealing with someone and they're chronically late, especially without be giving an excuse or I should say a reason why, not excuse, a reason why, that just like, ooh, that really gets to me, right? So understanding how to communicate that effectively so people don't push those buttons, because they will. Human nature, sometimes we do it even on purpose or even subconsciously. And then final way to introspect is to make sure you introspect on the professional side as well. Where do I want to go in my career? 
how am I getting there? Who do I need to know? Answer the six questions. Who, what, why, where, when, how? Why do I want to aspire, ascend to this level of leadership? Knowing that leadership is very, very difficult. It's not something that is you just sit in the seat and then everything falls into play. You start di dictating and mandating people to do certain things. It is not like that at all. If you think that's the way leadership is, then you have a surprise coming <laughs> because it will come. That's oh. not the way it happens. So Absolutely. it's really important. Say again. And, you know, you were talking about being aware, <clears throat> and I'll take you back to our modalities. The first one is the five parts of self. Right. And going back to the self, we lead it with self-confidence and then self-esteem, self-worth, mm -hmm. self-image, yep. and self-control. So Correct. those five parts of self are very important for the self-awareness. Because you have to know what, you know, what pet peeves is like clicking the pen. Somebody's clicking the pen and you're just getting mad on the inside. Just let them know, hey, would you please put the pen down? It really upsets me or whatever. It triggers or makes me mad. So a self-awareness, very important as a leader. And I'm with that takes me to the next question to Granison. Why is self-awareness important for leadership? All right, I'll get right into that. But let me show this graphic here. For those of you watching this online, and if you're watching the podcast via Spotify, we now have video podcast. Here is the graphic that we're talking about. If you see this triangle, which last time we spoke about the, the foundational principles, very, very important. Today we're talking about awareness. This is such a deep topic that we're only going to cover self-awareness today. We're not going to dive into the other's awareness and into, into situational awareness. Not too much. We may talk about it here and there. So understanding about the why is self why self awareness is important in leadership. So self awareness is important in leadership because it enables leaders to understand their strength, weaknesses, values, emotions, and how these factors influence their thoughts and actions. This understanding allows leaders to be more mindful and intentional of their leadership style, to build more effective relationships with others, to communicate more effectively, and to make better decisions. As was discussed earlier, so understanding how to make sure that our emotions. Let me talk about the emotions. We have a graphic. Well, let me show you this modality here. So we have a modality called the five parts of the authentic self. Move this over here. Five parts of the authentic self. Mind, will, imagination, emotions, and intellect. Okay? The emotions. Do You do want to understand how you are emotionally. This is where emotional intelligence comes into play. And emotional intelligence has two sides. Most of the time that we hear it's taught, it is about understanding someone else's emotions, how to interact and interweave your conversation and communicate with them effectively with their emotions, either very high or, or low, or if they're just kind of stoic. Well, it's also the other side. What about your emotions? So before you go into a conversation, let's say you have a conversation, the accountability conversation coming up with one of your subordinates coming up very, very soon. Before you get into that conversation about the excuse me, before you get into conversation about the issue, the problem, whatever nonconformance you're talking about or have at hand, what you want to do is make sure you check your emotions. There are conversations that have a heightened level of emotions attached to them. I should say they can if you let them. And it's important for us to approach the conversation in the right manner. It's important for us to move towards the conversation and with their perspective in mind, their feelings, their thoughts in mind, but also my feelings, my thoughts, and the actions that I am about to institute during this conversation. Two aspects that really, really matter, your verbal communication and your nonverbal communication. You can be aggressive towards someone with nonverbal communication. So to be self-aware, and how that is portrayed and how that looks going into the conversation because the approach, and remember, again, I'm going to say it one more time, the approach is extremely important because how you approach someone, they're going to have the guards up. Most of the time, just assume that those guards are already up. And how you approach them, those guards are going to stay up. And you need to, as a leader, you need to be effectively utilizing communication in order to have their guards come down so you can get through to them, not to punch them in the face, but so you can get through to them 
<laughs> in order to move forward past the issue. It doesn't matter what the conflict is, doesn't matter what the conversation is, that approach, and I'm holding, I'm standing there on your toes for a little bit because the approach is extremely important. This is where I see most leaders fall flat on their face in terms of mitigating some sort of issue. The, the approach is massively wrong. Now, there are times when we have to have these tough conversations and we, we feel this swell of emotions and the swell of emotions can be very deleterious to the relationship if we let it get past, if we let it go to the aggressive side, the arrogant side, that side that's not, shouldn't be passive aggressive, shouldn't be passive, shouldn't be arrogant either, or I should say or aggressive, but you should be assertive. And there are times when the assertive conversation is appropriate. And there's a fine balance between being assertive and arrogant, like I said, or aggressive. And aggressive, yeah. 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 Fine, fine balance. That's why leaders, we have another modality talking about balance, understanding how balance is in every single thing. And as a leader, we have to get it right first time. Yeah. First time. There are times when we we're all human. We're going to mess up, but we have to get it right the very first time. We have to give all our energy, all our thought processes. And I'm going to show you this graphic here again. All the energy and all the thought processes that we have in terms of making this an appropriate conversation. It does take a lot of energy and a lot of nuance to have that conversation in the right mind state with the right mindset. It's very particular, very hard to do but the more you do it as a leader or like any other skill set the more you do it the better you get at it the more you master the technique the more you meditate on it the more you replay it in your head or at least the a situation and how you want the outcome to be the more you replay that over and over and over in your head the better outcome you're going to have for future state opportunities and guess what they are going to be there as a leader. So that's what I have to say there about your your relationship with yourself, your self-awareness. That's why it's important as a leader. I don't want to underestimate or give you the idea that this is not an important factor. This is extremely important as a leader. I want to add something, Granson, you talked sure. about the way it's whatever the, the um, conversation is the way it's delivered sometimes it's also the intent versus interpretation mm -hmm. you might deliver something with an intent that it's, it's clear the communication is clear but it is not it's it's vague so understanding how the self-awareness piece how you delivered what you said and then clarifying it that's important as well sure Absolutely. And that's clarifying it is, is another part of the equation of the conversation in order to have it move forward for a positive outcome. We we'll always want a positive outcome. Never has anyone said in the history of leadership, oh, I want this to be a negative outcome. No, we don't think like that. We don't approach it like that. So making sure that we have the appropriate mindset and going into it. And remember, this is not all about you. The self-awareness is and that's the one thing that we don't have to teach in our program is to teach people how to be innately and inherently self-centered. We have to teach self-awareness, but not self-centeredness. So there's a difference there. So when we're talking about being self-centered, it's all about me, 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 me. What benefit am I going to get in this particular situation? Or well, then we have to think altruistically about other people and other situations. So let's talk about others. Well, I did talk, well, we talk about others. Let me talk about situational awareness right quick. I'm not going to dive into it too much. As a leader, and you guys, you can chime in. As a leader, it is extremely opportunistic for us to also be situationally aware of the of the opportunities at hand. We have to be very observant, very very observant. In fact, it's one of the forty four different leadership skills we identified in our program. It's observation skills, and understand observation skills come by not only seeing, but also hearing, also making sure even from if we have to get to the point touching at times there are the five physical senses help us be more aware and if you utilize these five physical senses in the correct way then we can understand situational awareness a little bit more also forward thinking and insight 
the appropriate use of the imagination is to encapsulate and capture a picture for a positive outcome and understanding the situation at hand, role playing it through your head right quick and boom, executing some sort of communication to make sure that you have, again, a positive outcome. We're always looking for that positive outcome. So that's that about situational awareness. Very good. Cool. So let's go to our third question we want to answer. The third question we want to answer today is what skill sets are essential for self-awareness? Yasmin, you want to take this one? Sure. All right. So the first one, like we talked about, is the emotional intelligence, understanding one's own emotions and how they impact others, and also tap into others' emotional state and, and understanding their emotions, not only in that moment, or how it's going to affect them after the fact you've had the conversation or whatever the situation might be. So emotional intelligence, absolutely huge. Refer yeah. Yeah, reflective practice. Take time to reflect on experiences and actions to gain insight into strengths and weaknesses. To me, that was so important as a leader, identifying my strengths, how I can influence other people with the strengths that I have, and then also tapping into how I can develop some of the opportunities. And I'm so glad I had great mentors, great bosses who right. were aligned with who I was and helped me, groom me to get to where I needed to be, to be a better leader in, in some of the opportunity areas. So reflective practices, absolutely huge in identifying strengths and opportunities. Active listening, a lot of times, as a leader, leaders are so busy, they're listening, I mean, they're hearing, but sometimes I wonder if they really listen. They're busy thinking, <laughs> they're busy thinking of what they're gonna say to you next. So yeah. they're not actively listening. But if you don't listen, you can't be a good leader. You have to listen, actively listen, pay attention to what others are saying and seeking <laughs> to understand their perspective. Right. Like Madison said, it's not all about you, you, you. It is about others too. Have to be altruistic, have to listen and actively listen. And then seeking feedback. To me, that was one of the most, another most important um, uh, factor as a leader is how do you know how you're performing? Yeah, your boss will tell you, but he only gets to see you every now and then. And all he sees or she sees you is on paper, your results but your team will give you absolutely accurate information about how your performance is. Ask them, do a, do an anonymous survey. Sometimes they won't tell you if they don't like you, but ask right. you feedback from others and using to improve it. And let me interject there. At times as leaders, we don't like to ask for that feedback because we're afraid of what we're going to hear. Mm -hmm. That definitely reflects on us. So you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable as a leader, understanding that when you inquire about you from someone else and do encourage them to be authentic. Sometimes leaders, we have the problem of people telling us what we think we want to hear versus what we really need to hear for improvement. So seeking feedback in the right way and asking for that in an appropriate way is also very, very particular in how you ask, how you approach situations so you can get honest and open feedback to improve yourself. Absolutely. And you, one of my favorite bosses of all time, he's online right now. Thank you, Kevin Wilson. You were one of my favorite bosses and a great mentor. Uh, and right. you did help develop some of those opportunities that I've had <coughs> and make me into a better leader. So it really takes a great boss to identify your opportunities and, and your strengths. The next yeah. one is mindfulness being present and focused in the moment without distractions you know i i don't like it when the bosses are halfway you know hey let me let me finish this text yeah go ahead and tell me what you you're telling me be in the moment how can you give them full attention when you're distracted in so many different ways so mindfulness and then cultural competency understanding and appreciating the diverse backgrounds and perspective of others Again, my favorite boss, Kevin Wilson, who is right now on, he taught me the diverse, the, I mean, we were of diverse um, culture anyway, but not only being diverse, but understanding the diversity and utilizing the strengths 
of that diversity to get results. Correct. So that another, that's another skill set that a lot of bosses don't have. And, you know, we go into companies and we coach those bosses that you have to be aware of what you say, how you say it, and also be mindful of identifying people's strengths and opportunities. And being very accepting. We have this word here on the other side of the, here, the right side of the triangle, the word acceptance. Accept the cultural differences. Nothing you can do about it. All you can do is accept it. Understand that someone can't also change the color of their skin. You can't do that, per se, right? It's all things being equal. You still have that opportunity to accept the diversity of other people and they even incorporate some of the things that they may bring to the table that way innovation and other creativity and either ideas can flourish because we accept the difference in people that's all well and good just to be more accepting as leaders we have to understand nothing we can do about some things that we might be biased about but we have to accept accept them right and then adaptability being able to adjust to changing circumstances and embracing new ideas. You know, Amazon is great because they accept new ideas. Actually, they that's part of the, the prerequisite of you coming on board. You have to be creative. You have to present new ideas. So as a leader, foster that. The next one would be the open-mindedness, willingness to consider new ideas. <laughs> Uh, of course, and then self-regulation, managing emotions and impulses in a healthy and productive manner. Accept people's emotions, manage not only your emotions, but others' emotions and the impulses, because right. sometimes those emotions can go awry. Self-regulation, let me hold on that one for a bit. We often talk about leaders setting the temperature in the room, and you do that by the energy that you are portraying that you are putting out there and it's up to us to regulate that energy because sometimes we can come into a situation very much on fire and we can set everything else ablaze and that may not be a good thing at the moment if especially for the negative aspect if we're energizing people we get them all fired up about a particular opportunity that's well and good but understand that self-regulation is a really really important aspect for us to understand how to control within oneself it's harder to control it within oneself especially when we have that fervor, that passion, that desire, that frustration, the anger, whatever else, but we have to be self-regulating. Self-regulating is, is, is right underneath self-awareness. There's one aspect of it. And, and the, your energy says a lot about you, but also says a lot about how you can control and set the temperature of the room when you're about to address issues and talk to other people. Absolutely. All right, Granison, you have some yeah. tips. How do you become more self-aware? Do you have any okay. tips? Yeah, I'll give you my top seven items there to be more self-aware, to become more self-aware. So become more self-aware involves continuous process of self-improvement or self-reflection, as we just spoke about, but also the self-discovery. There are some things that you will discover that are embedded in your human nature as a male and as a female as well that you will understand how to accept and understanding how to discover more of those things and do I like this about it? Do I want to change? Do I like this about me or do I want to change this? Or do I like this or do I like, like that? Whatever. Whatever angle you come from, understand that self-discovery is something that you should continuously be operating in. That's why training, coaching, mentoring on both sides, you being the trainer, coacher as a leader and mentor as a leader, but also ex getting more training, coaching, mentoring as a leader is also important. It's, it's double-sided. It never should go away. As a leader, we should always, always, always be growing. The only way we grow is we learn more, we expand our mindset continuously so we can lead others. Now, let's talk about point number one. We talk about engage in self-reflection. Take time to reflect on experiences and how they have shaped you. There are a lot of opportunities that have happened to us on the negative side that we bring over into leadership, and we don't want to have those influence our relationships with other people. So we have to understand how that quote, to use lack of a better word, trauma may have affected us and how that could, we can move the goalposts forward if we so choose to uh, with that particular thing. When I say move it forward, get it out of the way. There are some things that happen to us from an, an interest that when we introspect that we have to deal with. Something we have to get off our chest. We may have to talk with somebody, get closure on this or whatever. Leaders, we do that. That's being more 
in a in a very in a very appropriate fashion, conflict confronting versus conflict avoidance. Conflict avoidance going to may have you blow up into some things, but those things shape us. Even the positive aspect of us also they shape us. We've had certain successes over time, over a period of time, We're executing this over and over and over, but having those successes create our mindset. And also, and then it seeps down into what we spoke about last week, those foundational principles. And then we execute from those foundational principles, leading and managing and performing with other people. So understand that. So ask yourself these, I have three questions I want you to ask yourself. One, what motivates me? Find out what motivates you. We all have motivators. Sometimes it's money, sometimes getting gratitude from people, having other successes, whatever your motivating factors are, do understand that the motivation is key for you. So find out what motivates you, find out what deflates you, unmotivates you, right? It just, it, whatever that may be, find out both sides of the equation. I'm so focused on the balance side. If I find out one side, I'm gonna find out the opposite side as well. What are my core values? So understanding the core values, the core principles that you have learned over time as a follower before you became a leader, understand how that is also nuanced in your opportunity for self-regulation and self-reflection as well. What are my pet peeves? I spoke about that earlier. I really, I really like to hone in on that one and be in tune because pet peeves create, or I should say they, uh, they evoke emotion out of us. Sadness, frustration, most likely frustration when we talk about pet peeves, some sort of disappointment, whatever. Understand what those are. Make sure we, we finalize in our mindset what they are. What are your top three? What are your top five? If you can name 10, good. Then communicate those as well. Final question, what are my triggers? Kind of like the same thing, pet peeves, triggers. But what are some of the things that really trigger me to do X, Y, Z, positive and negative side? Do I like to, when I get passionate, am I interrupting people when I'm communicating and talking because I want to get my point across? Understand those things are, that's a, that's a trigger on, on that side. What is it What is it that really gets me to the point of disrupting or interrupting, right? So we can manage those in a fashion that is very palatable, not just for ourselves, but for also for other people who ever communicate with. It's very important. It's funny you say that, as you were saying, my triggers, one of my triggers is people eating with their mouths open. Oh my God, <laughs> I can't it. They're sitting there chewing and smacking at the same time. <laughs> oh, that's funny, too funny. But yeah, that's uh, that's one of my lower triggers is lower the hell the total pole. <laughs> I learned how to deflect my attention, at least my eyesight for a, a period of time so I don't have to see that. Especially talking. <laughs> Ah, you see the food. Ah, I don't. No, like I didn't that. want to disrupt you to turn off thought, but that just hit me like that. Anyway, go yes. ahead. <laughs> yeah, take the opportunity to practice. The point number two: practice the mindfulness. The as we talk about, practice it, practice it, practice it, deliberately, intentionally. Practice mindfulness. So take time. To focus on your thoughts. And I explain it like this with special thought: the, the most difficult thing you will ever do as a person and in life is understand how to control thoughts. It is very, very difficult. We have all this external environment opportunities from things from the five physical senses, things we see, things we hear, things we taste that can very much so take us off the path of being mindful or, or controlling the thoughts. But controlling the thoughts is very tough. It is extremely tough. Five parts of the, excuse me, five parts of the authentic self, again, <clears throat> my will the imagination emotions and intellect all that is of the of the cognitive aspect of it and it's tough to really imagine control the thoughts the things that we want to you have to have self-control over all five parts of those self-control from one modality over all five parts of that particular opportunity it's tough controlling the thoughts the emotions sometimes as well we understand how to control the emotions I think this way, we understand how to control the emotions sometimes better than the thoughts, but then the thoughts actually create the actions and the words and actions that we actually portray. So they have to be balanced. You have to be very in tune with each one of them individually, collectively as well, because the thoughts can trigger emotions. Yep. So I have a question for you while we're talking about another disruption. You know, in the, in the recent past, we've had some clients that have had episodes of 
not being able to control those emotions in meetings in front of others and having these emotional outbursts. Mm -hmm. And those outbursts are in the form of tears. How can somebody practice that mindfulness? I know it's got to be triggered, something that triggered. And right. how can you control those emotions to where it's not disruptive to everyone else in the meeting? Because you know what happens? Somebody starts to cry and there goes the momentum. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, but that's yeah. what happens. Yeah. And and, and that, yeah. yeah. And, and, we, and we have clients over the years especially even in conversations that have shed tears. Oftentimes we develop a relationship to where they can be open, they can be authentic, something happened. And these are leaders who are very strong in their position, very prowessed, very nuanced. They're, they're very smart people. But human nature does kick in at times. So the first part of your question was, how do we control the emotion aspect of it? How do we practice that? And there's one way to practice that that can definitely help. And unfortunately, this is the one way that will trigger, potentially trigger tears, but then you have to then go into practice mode. And that is to think about a situation that was very hurtful for you and re-engage with that emotion. This takes, now I don't recommend you do this if you don't have control. This is a very, very advanced technique, extremely advanced, but it's understanding how to control that swell of emotions because you will have the opportunity again to have to be met with some sort of offense some sort of derogatory comment or some sort of intention that was very much so misconstrued and communicated you thought you communicated right but it was received the interpretation was totally wrong and it will evoke an emotion especially if your heart intent was in the right place this is one of the more common issues so the one thing we do is we have to revisit that, have to revisit that. But again, this is such a, a an advanced level technique in order to do this so that you don't then operate continuously in that thing because the imagination can just go boom and go all over the place. And it will if you don't, if you don't bring it back in and have it coalesce right into the thought process that you should have it be in. So that's one way to do that. Now, there's a disruption that happens if it does happen, and it does, because when I instruct clients to go back and fix this issue, time is of the essence, got to do this in a speedily, timely, accurate fashion. Remember my modality for the six strategies of execution, speed, accuracy, and timing, never sacrificing speed for accuracy, right? Money, making sure we have that thought process in our mind. So you have to address the issue at hand and you have to address the issue at hand in a very timely manner. It, that may be issue just happened today, address the issue tomorrow, that soon, or just happen, especially if it's a bigger issue that really has a, a, a particular different dynamic to it, you have to address it. You have to. And guess what? You may feel that swell of emotions. I always warn my coaches about that. You may feel that you got to go address this, but you may feel this. You may have to apologize, but you may feel this because your intent was taken wrong. And when it does, guess what? It happens. When it does happen, again, we're human. And if you do have a, a, a tearjerker moment, all well and good. Keep going through the moment. Wipe the tear away and keep talking. Keep talking about the issue. Now, if you feel like you just have to break down and just like all ball out in tears, then I suggest you separate yourself from the environment for a period of time, for sure. Because you're having a, a tear come out when you're talking about it, all well and good. The nose turns red. Can't see my nose turn red. But if it does, <laughs> right, you know, you have that opportunity. People can see, you know, the teary eye. That's okay. Just talk through the moment. We're human. We got We have to, to have those tough conversations at that point in time. Did I answer your question? Uh, kind of, kind of not. What I was really getting to, if you were the leader leading mm -hmm. the meeting and somebody yep. in the audience bursts into tears because you touched a nerve. Sure. How do you then continue? Because now you disrupted. Somebody started crying. Well, that, all eyes on them. So there you go. Your train of thought is gone. Your momentum is gone. And they, now you've got to, everyone's focused on this individual who is booing or not booing, at least crying, and now sure. the disruption. I say it's a, you can touch on the moment, but you get back on track. Don't lose your thought. Address the, the issue. Hey, you know what? Hey, if I 
my apology if I made you cry, whatever it may, whatever that may be at that time, whatever the right conversation is, it's very opportunistic to, to address it, but then keep on talking about the issue and the problem. Ask yeah. them is there anything they want to say about it. Inquire them. Let them get something off of their chest as well. Oh God, so that's, yeah. why, that's why I had. I have to handle that several times <laughs> that way in meetings. I've been there, done that. Oh yeah, me too. If you oh. ask them, Grandison, then they take over the meeting. So my suggestion. Well, well if you allow them to take over, I don't allow them to take over the meeting. Yeah. But I would rather, say, you know, I would rather say, you know what? Why don't you take a moment, step step out, and collect yourself, and we'll have this conversation later. If you need to. You know, if you don't want to come back to the meeting, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But let's discuss this later on today. A way, what she is saying was a way. What I explained was actually a way, not the way. Meaning there are many different nuances in terms of how that can be handled. I, from uh, the aspect of having people still be there and be attentive, I'll keep, I'll continue to talk. I've had to do that a few different times, but also excuse people, uh, also like just like you said it as well. So either way, that's a way, and there are many different ways to handle that situation. Or just let them cry and keep. I'm sorry, I don't that's want to say. Yeah. Listen, cold. Uh, yeah. so, you know, they're in a meeting. They're. Um, yeah. Yep, they're that's exactly what I was talking about. Maybe cry before, and I just keep on talking. I either dress or push over the box of tissue if there's some tissue there, or I take, I take, take out my handkerchief and give it to somebody. And my take out my handkerchief and give it to someone. There you go. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Because they're gonna be looking for it anyway. Yeah, there you go. All right. Sorry. Point number three. Identify patterns. Okay, we all have patterns. Do recognize your patterns. It's really tough to admit some of the patterns, especially the ones that can be detrimental to an opportunity. Or when you're in an opportunity, understand how those patterns work. So look for patterns in your thoughts. Look for patterns in your emotions. Look for patterns in your behaviors in order to gain an understanding and more perspective about yourself. This also takes introspection, but your patterns are there. We all have patterns. A lot of times, this old phrase, we're creatures of habit. Yeah, there are times we do things in a habitual way. We develop a pattern. We've had some successes with it. And so we're going to continue to do it that way. Patterns are one of the things that, one of the opportunities that we all have as leaders to recognize, do something about it. But it's tough to admit, especially some of the negative patterns we have. We all have patterns in relationships. And this is a professional relationship as a leader to subordinate, leader to superior, leader to colleagues and peers. We have those relationships and you have patterns. What are your patterns? What are the ones you don't like? What are the ones you have an, a, a, a bit of an issue dealing with and move forward with that? Point number four, which I've said before, get to know your emotional triggers, get to know those triggers. Pay attention to what causes strong emotions and how to learn and manage them effectively. That's my point there. I've, I've touched on that one a couple different times in this conversation, but do know that those emotional triggers, they are there. They're there. And you can also trigger other people's emotions as well. Point number five, seek feedback. As you guys have been talking about, seek feedback. Ask others their honest opinion on your strengths, your weaknesses, as well as where you can improve. It takes a strong, confident leader in order to do that. And you tell people to be totally open and honest with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like your feedback on this issue. As your leader, I want to continue to improve so I can be the best me for you as well. Do Let's talk about some of the, the opportunities that you see that I can be more improving on or I can improve in. Making sure you say, okay, just be authentic. This is not, has anything that's not going to have anything to do in a negative fashion with your career. Just be honest with me in a professional way and let me know how I can have better conversations with you and the team members and blah, 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 whatever it looks like. But get feedback and just be open and honest with them. Tell me what I should hear, not what I want to, what you think I want to hear. And they'll tell you. I've, I've asked that question several times and I've never gone awry. I've taken that information. Some of it would rub the wrong way. To be honest with you, but I sat there, stoic, wrote down information, and guess what? It helped me improve. One of the toughest conversations that you're going to have is a self-improvement feedback, asking someone else, especially your subordinates. Keep a journal. A lot of you, I, I keep, I have, some people have, they like to scribe it, which is good because the writing aspect of it and going through the motions help bring it, put it into to your mindset, even in a deeper fashion. I have 
my notes on my phone. And wherever I am, I have, if I don't have my book, I can definitely write, take notes on my phone or whatever. So I have an app that, that incorporates note taking and I utilize that, but do keep a journal and then go back and reread those opportunities. Can I advance in this opportunity? Have I done well? Have I changed? Have I altered my perception here? And going forward with that and then seek out new experiences. Seek out new experiences by even experimenting with some of the things that we've been talking about. Seek out new experiences and broaden your mindset and things that you don't think you or things that you find interesting. New things that me, can be, me let me keep it in capacity of leadership. New opportunities concerning concerning how to become a better leader. What is it that I need to learn more about accountability? How can I be more process mindset oriented? How can I focus on the people side of it? Also, how can I focus on the performance side of it? What about KPIs? And how do I institute those across my department and also at the individual level? What are our organization KPIs? All these new experiences, new ideas and things that you can incorporate into your conversation that will massively have you improve as you continue to go on. So by consistently thinking about these things, being very strategic, being very open with yourself, introspection, isolation, and meditating on those things, you will improve as you can develop as a deep, deeper understanding of yourself and become more self-aware and also become more others aware. Remember, you want to go on both sides. You want to understand you, but you also want to understand others. Very important as a leader. In fact, the more self-aware you're going to be as a leader, the better you're going to be as a a, an, an influencer leading other people and having that relationship so where you are actually leading them to success. There you have it, folks. So do you do you think, Grandison, in your perspective, mm -hmm. experience and age has something to do with that as well? The self-awareness piece that you are more self-aware of yourself as you get older and with more experiences. I would say that should be the equation. You should be as you get older. You should be. <laughs> they should be because you and I both know that we have people who come to the program. They are of a, a mature age, and guess what? They're not that self-aware. They're not that self-aware, and True. the ones who are the least self-aware have not dealt with said traumas and things in their personal life and guess what you're one person you're one person going in the professional and the personal and guess what they bring each of those, those opportunities those things that happen over here in the personal life into the workplace environment and it should be separate and the, the more polished you are better so it should be but the equation doesn't even it's not particular all the time it's not that way all the time what's been your experience on that question for you same as you. I mean, there are certain young people like in the 20s and their mindset is like they're in their 50s. They're sure. a lot more mature than some of the mature individuals. And then sure. there are mature individuals that act like babies, you know, it's like yeah. babysitting grown grown people. Absolutely. And, and Absolutely. I've encountered both, actually. <laughs> now, there are some people that you meet, they're young and they're precocious and they have a very kind of the old soul, as people say, and they are very mature for their age. That was me when I was growing up. That's why, even when getting into leadership development and on all being a leader, it was harder for me to be accepted, especially when I was younger, because I didn't have this grizzled look. Right, that helped me out a lot in terms of people seeing from an observation standpoint, seeing me as more mature, even though I had a lot of content, information, experience in my head. But I do say that, and the people who will be very experienced, have taken bits and pieces of the experience and incorporate them into their awareness mindset and they grow exponentially versus incrementally like some of the other people that we coach and, and train the program. And I don't wanna open this can of worms, but in diversity, being diverse, self-awareness has been really very critical and crucial. Mm. I know, especially being of color and a woman, it's been you have to be more self-aware sure and you have to be other, you have to be situationally aware about the stereotypes based on for instance i'm talking about myself be, me being and we have this old diversity aspect in every single organization 
So me being a, a black male, there are certain stereotypes, certain opportunities that are in the ether that I could either adhere to and have to be aware of those, or I can not adhere to them and totally destroy those stereotypes pertaining to me. So when I incorporate in a conversation and I incorporate some sort of integration with these other people that we're dealing with from a relationship standpoint, whether it's client or whether it's friend or a colleague, whatever, destroying those stereotypes have become important to me. Mm -hmm. So I understand I'm aware right. of what I do that can affect either perpetuate the stereotype and or mitigate the stereotype in their mind. And I have to be aware of that. And I'm glad you said that because a lot of times people with diversity become or victimize themselves. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. And yes. that is yeah. really devastating to both parties. The, yeah. the leader, yeah. you as a leader, if you're victimizing yourself, and I've seen that, you know, you and I handle those. Oh, yeah, yeah. Every oh, yeah. Day. Well, because I am of color and because I am this, this happened. No, I mean, you've got to be, like you said, situational awareness, self-awareness. And those are the individuals that uh, have lack of self-awareness and situational awareness. Yeah. They just say what they say because they feel that's the right thing to say. And yeah. they will be, I mean, they will be looked upon as victims and that's the victory and so on and so forth but to those leaders my word is of caution don't as leaders you should never see color yep. you should see the strengths opportunities and abilities and i think yep. that's all, all i have to say well said now i'm going to leave it right there because that's so true do understand that if you have the victim mentality because you don't know yourself well if you have the victim mentality, you do not know yourself well. You, you don't know yourself at all. I'm going to leave it right there. Yes, leave it right me. there. Let's let's talk about what's happening this weekend. And uh, you said you want to um, talk more about the, the bones and the cigars and all this. Stuff yeah, that yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, yeah, you didn't know this part, but I, I wrote down that we're going to do a cigar etiquette. We will have a date for that one later on. We'll do a cigar etiquette class, right? And that's going to be a class that I will actually be instructing. We'll have some cigars. We'll bring some people in. We're going to talk about cigar etiquette. I have a, I did a series called 13 Things Never to Do When Smoking a Cigar. We do it, we'll talk about that. We also have, again, go to smokeandbonesaz.com, smokeandbonesaz.com for tonight. If you want to join the domino tournament along with the NFL players that will be there, mm -hmm. I got a list of them this morning. Uh, the gentleman was sending over some images of who's going to, to be there. going to have a lot of fun. There'll be food trucks. There'll be all kinds of activities. So, of course, smoking cigars and eating good food and also watching this tournament and having interaction. We have some other things that we're going to be doing later on in the week. We'll be talking to some other people about our program, actually. We're not going to reveal that just yet. We're going to talk to a team about our program and making sure that we can get in and start adjusting the mindset. So when they are acclimated or getting acclimated to civilian life again, they have this mindset that's going to help them to, to increase exponentially and make sure that it happens as well. So there's a lot going on this weekend. So be Building their self-awareness, Grant. Isn't Building it? their self-awareness, absolutely. And how that is going to be portrayed into their business endeavors from that point forward, whatever they get into, not just business, but also their personal endeavors as well. So remember, folks, do like, share, subscribe. If you're watching it on YouTube, hit that notification bell. Hit subscribe, hit notification. Make sure you get all of our notifications. If you're on LinkedIn, join our group on LinkedIn, our Saduri page, Saduri International page. Go there. If you're watching it there, just hit the follow button. And then same thing for Facebook. If you're on our page, hit the like button for the video, but also make sure that you tune into us, hit the like, share, subscribe button there so you can get all the notifications. We'll be back again next week. Next week, we're going to talk about communication, how communication is important for a leader, getting into the next week conversation, getting into our core competencies here at Suduri International. We're going to be talking about that again. Our website, Suduri International, suduriintl.com. Go there. Pick a side, the entrepreneur side, the corporate side, look at information there. Get in tune with us. Get in touch with us. Send us an email, info at securityintl.com. And make sure we get your email. Whatever questions you have, we'll be answering those questions for you.
All right, folks. Awesome. Thank you very much for attending attending the broadcast. This is part two, the leadership path, the essence of excellence and successful leadership. Talking about self-awareness. Stay tuned and be there with us next week. All right, folks. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.